Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I uh, hope it turns out to be a nice day for you and you can make the best use of it. And, uh, so, we're, we're, we're going to really not waste our time talking about the weather, even though the title suggests that. The title of our lesson is Grabbing the Wind. And it definitely seems like an action of futility. Well, that observation was made nearly 3,000 years ago by one of the wisest men who ever lived. Solomon has get, been given credit for the writings in the book of Ecclesiastes. And this book uses the phrase, grasping after the wind, nine times. So, uncertainty is what he's talking about. And while wind does have some uses, mankind has failed to control it. And due to the fact that wind blows and man has failed to control it, man has found some ingenious ways to use the wind. I mean, many boats and ships move across the water because the wind is captured in its sails. And man has now turned these windmills, which were basically pumps to bring water to the surface, uh, basically has allowed them to start producing electricity. And... Uh, so, there, I mean, some people harvest the wind in, in various ways, and they use the wind to accomplish some things. And yes, there are some ingenious methods about that. But anyway, the, the whole idea of grasping for the wind seems to be an exercise in futility. And uh, there are many things around us that just seem futile to even attempt to change. You know, politics rub us the wrong way. And we know that system is broken, and everybody knows it is broken, yet it appears nobody is doing anything about it. And certainly there are many things that can and should be done, but it seems to also be an exercise in futility. Because those involved in it, they don't want it to change. So there's always resistance to any type of change. And so something I'm sure that bothers God is man's refusal to obey God. I mean, that, that's got, that really bothers God. We know it. The scripture tells us that. And most people in this world do not even care what God feels anyway. As long as they have their fun and do what they want to do, they could care less if God approves or disapproves of their actions. And that's the majority of people in this world. And yet, still, a lot of people really do realize that if people would stop their sins, that this world we live in would be a better place. I mean, everybody seems to go along with that idea, and they, they can understand it, yet they're not willing to give up their own sins. Seems others to cease their sins, but that is not likely going to happen either. And, and so... Uh, such sinful behavior must come to a stop if we have any hope of improving this world. And since sin is going to continue, the people who practice sin are going to get worse, as the scripture says, then what we have to concentrate upon is ourselves and make sure that we don't get caught up in that whirlwind of sin and deception. So sometimes even suggesting that we could change the world uh, almost seems to be an exercise in futility, or we could say the same thing. It's kind of grasping after the wind, because reality tells us it, it's not really going to change things. So when you see the results of the wind, and you can envision the end of the matter, there should be concern on everyone's part. We know what it does. I mean, the, the climatologists have been watching the wind for years, and and they can pretty much predict which direction the wind is going to blow, and they can see uh, what it's going to do and how it's going to affect people. And they can also tell when it's going to be a very strong wind, and they can give us the warnings there. But, uh, I mean, the wind there. I mean, there should be concern on everybody's part, when, especially when the wind's going to get real nasty, like when hurricanes come, tornadoes, uh, just very high winds. I mean, it causes damage. And so, it is true of this generation that we read of in Hosea 8 and verse 7. They have sown to the wind, and they will reap the whirlwind. Yeah, everybody keeps sowing to the wind, but guess what? The whirlwind is going to come eventually. So, the, the point is, we don't have to follow the crowd. 
you don't have to follow the crowd because really that can get you into trouble most of the time I mean Exodus warns us do not follow a crowd to do mischief and a lot of times uh, the majority of people are heading the wrong direction anyway and uh, so that, that that can be a bad thing and so uh, if you'll step back and seek the Lord with your whole heart God will re respond with kindness towards you and based on your obedience to his will will shower you with blessings see God has always done that for those who turn to him and serve him take the time to read 2nd Chronicles 33 today read about Manasseh he was the most wicked king we read about but he turned his life around and started serving God and God blessed him so there, there's a great lesson there I had a sermon on that a couple of weeks ago and uh, it was well well received and, and so God wants to treat us nicely and wants us to enjoy blessings yet there is a condition to be met in order to receive those blessings it is called obedience to God's commands God promises spiritual blessings because of the faith and obedience in Christ and being born again unto a new hope even under the Old Testament law God laid down some provisions uh, there in Deuteronomy chapter 28 says if you will serve me and be my people then I will bless you I will multiply your flocks and your family and I will give you great honor and glory and yet he also turned around and warned them but if you stop serving me I'm gonna bring problems on you and yeah sin causes problems and the result of sin is uh, a lot of problems we have to deal with and so while we also know that God really doesn't promise physical blessings anymore under this system, we are told and, and reminded that uh, good things happen to those who love the Lord. And yes, we attribute this to the providence of God. He does look out for us. He does keep us safe. Uh, he, he does protect us. And while he may not uh, stop a natural disaster from coming, he gives us the common sense to know to get out of the way if we can. If not, as long as we're in a right relationship with God, even if we die, he's going to be taking care of our soul and going to welcome us into heaven. So, yes, God does good for those who love the Lord. And uh, he, he makes that promise so we can take that to heart. And so we need to spend our time seeking the Lord. Make your time count. And... and uh, Redeeming the time, as, as Paul wrote there at the Ephesians, you've got to redeem the time because the days are evil. You've got to make the best use of your time. All of us need to make the best use of our time, and the best thing we can be doing is focusing on spiritual matters and focusing upon heaven as our goal. Yeah, Jesus Christ is there with the door open waiting for us, and we keep our gaze fixed on Jesus, then we're going to reach that. But once we take our eyes off of Jesus, we're going to have problems. You know, that, that, that was Peter's problem when he, when he was walking on the water. Yeah, Jesus walking on the water, and Peter said, can I come out to you? Sure, come on. As long as he was watching Jesus, I mean, he was walking on the water. But the moment he took his eyes off of Jesus, he started to sink. And so that's our problem, too. When we take our focus and our eyes off of Jesus, we start to sink. So don't let that happen to you. Consider these things and uh, re realize that grabbing after wind is just an exercise in futility. In fact, it's impossible to grab it. Yeah, we can use it. We can use it to our advantage, but it is impossible to grab the wind. Uh, it's impossible to lasso the wind like, uh, who was that? Pecos Bill, something like that. Anyway. Uh, that's our lesson for today. Consider these thoughts, and um, Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.
you'll see Fred in a minute. There's some more cute ones, but what watch this. <laughs> That one cat got you with a little. <laughs> Harry, that was Fred. That looked so much like Fred. Yeah. 